Hi everyone, we are live, me and Anita today. Thank you so much for coming. Hi Anita, how are you today? I'm pretty good, I'm pretty good. Um, good. Everything is great, yes, yes. I'm actually having a good day today. <laughs> okay, uh, is your son home today? Yeah, uh, he's, he's, his foot is, he's, he's like, uh, I think he, uh, he injured his foot a little bit. I don't think it's anything, uh, you know, serious. It just needs a little bit time to heal. So I kept him home. So, you know, he, he doesn't do that whole, you know, at school where they don't go on the playground. So he mm -hmm. can rest it off. But other than that, yeah, other than him being home, everything is great. <laughs> no, okay. Oh, good, good, good. Mine are home too, both my boys. Uh -huh. uh, one is not feeling well and one is uh, uh, studying because uh, he got some online classes. So uh, he's home. Uh, they're both home. And I told them not to use uh, the internet because... <laughs> I, I am, <laughs> I am not, so if we have any kind of a, a frozen <laughs> screens, yeah. uh, that's why, because <laughs> the kids are home. Um, yeah, and I want to say good morning to everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you guys are. Uh, hi, Linda and Ren, Ren, Render Hunters, <laughs> and Gina and Robin, who, uh, Sharon, Sha no, Sharain, right? Am I saying it right? I, I, yes. Yeah, and Lori, and hi, Shama, and Kathy. Uh, yeah, you made it on time. Yeah, thank you for, for joining us. Do you want to say hello to another, uh, another batch, Anita? Yeah, uh, I think I, we have Dora, Mom, Cassidy, Monica, um, Olga, Kathy Phillips, uh, Shama, Lori, Sh I'm, I'm going to get this one wrong, too. <laughs> Sharian, I hope we're saying that right. Yeah. Robin, Lida, uh, Lida uh, Gina, and I think that's Randar Hunters. Mm -hmm. We have okay. a new person, two new people, Maria, Alex, Crystal. Uh, yes, it's Rain. Oh, it's Rain. Rain. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Sharain. Okay. Sharain. Okay. Uh -huh. And Sherry's mm -hmm. here. Okay. Yes. Okay. And Crystal Thank and you. Alex and Maria from Romania. Hello. Uh, and Dora, right? So, uh, and Monica is also from Romania. Thank you, ladies, for for uh, for joining us. And we appreciate the fact that you are uh, uh, typing in English. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I can always translate. But um, uh, and we have another Lucia here, mm -hmm. also from Romania. She's saying uh, good uh, good evening to all of all of us. And Kate Uh So today, you guys, mm -hmm. we decided to talk a little bit about um, items that we think as a resellers that are, uh, at least in our opinion, that are important or uh, essentials. Right, Anita? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially when you're selling jewelry. So we are talking about uh, jewelry uh, reselling uh, items that uh, we consider that are uh, essentials. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to Leave them in the in the chats, or if you have uh, YouTube channels or Etsy stores, and you wanna kind of uh, share uh, your links with us, that will be also uh, yes, that will be also great and very welcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Anita, uh, do you wanna start with your number well, one, or <laughs> do you have? Well, I, think, uh, I think I think for me the number one thing to have as a jewelry sell reseller is to have the asset test. That's very important to have. Mm -hmm. That's the number mm -hmm. one. Think, yes. make sure what you have it will, to make sure on what kind of metal it is that you have mm -hmm. and yeah what would be what would be the number one for you uh, uh, I think so too yeah that was the first uh, item that I purchased when I started uh, uh, selling mm -hmm. jewelry it was the te uh, acid testing kit and mine is I don't know if you're using the same thing Anita but mine is this one purity test yes I think mine is the same too mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah, that's the one. And, and and just to let everybody know, you don't have to have a specific brand. Uh, all of them do pretty much the same thing as long as you have the acids and then you have the stone. And yeah, mm -hmm. and yes. okay, I was going to also say one more thing and that's important to have and also comes sometimes comes with those kids is the loop. You know, the loop where, where you look mm -hmm. at the eyes. Yeah, the, the loop sometimes comes with that kit. That's also something that you need. Uh, to look for marks, uh, to use to look for marks. Mm -hmm. so if you don't have any, if you don't have anything at all right now, and you're planning on buying the acid test, go ahead and get the one that comes with the loop because the loop it comes with is really good. Uh, most of them have a little light on it as well. 
Yes, uh, mine didn't came with the loop. I bought my loop. Uh, actually, that was the first item. See, I'm wrong. That was the first item that I bought, the loop. <laughs> and then the purity test. But this one came also with the, um, uh, with the stone uh, in it. So, And yeah. we will leave all the links that um, after the video is done, uh, we will put them in the in the description. So then you guys can, if you're interested, and you you can uh, go and check uh, exactly what what are we uh, using. Well, right. Mine didn't come with the loop as well. At, mm -hmm. Like like just like you, I bought the loop separately, and then I bought the acid test separately. But now, since there is the option of getting them together, and if you're starting out new, it's better just to get the, get everything together. And they mm -hmm. even put a little wooden box. Now, where you know where you can put them and just put them in one area, so you don't have to worry about where to put the little bottles. Mm -hmm. So I would invest in the I would invest in the box too. That mm -hmm. way, everything is collected and, and nicely uh, put away. Mm -hmm. And always put it if you have kids, make sure you put that somewhere so very high that kids cannot reach. Exactly. Yes. It's very dangerous, especially mm -hmm. for children, uh, not to leave that laying around anywhere where they can get to. Yes, and also what another mention, Anita, is that um, they will expire at one point. Yes. So yes. you you don't need to buy too much. I think the the, the, the kit is perfect if you want to start, and then just buy uh, as as you go because uh, they will expire and they will give you uh, mm -hmm. uh, not accurate. They will uh, be they won't be accurate. Yeah, about well, three weeks. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't have a, a specific time frame to when it expires. It depends on how many times you open the lid, mm -hmm. how you use it, how long you let it sit with the lid open. It, it's all. It all depends on what you know the lid. You know how long it, or how many times it opens up, how how much it's exposed to air. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. and sometimes sometimes it may be something new and you just purchased it and you used it one week and you notice that you know it's giving uh, false readings. And what I do for that is I always put a sterling silver piece a broken piece something that i'm not using in the kit and also something gold in the kit as well when i'm going to do the gold testing mm -hmm. that way when you take out your stone just you know use the piece that you already have and just try it out because you know that piece is already silver you know that and that's yes. the, the reading is positive then you know that you know that the, the acid test is good the acid is good so then then continue uh testing your jewelry mm -hmm. Uh, you make yes. sure you make sure it's working first. Yes, it's working. Yes, mm -hmm. and we have uh, Nar Narjis and Francis and Paula uh, and three nights of gaming <laughs> and Chris uh, and simply Roberta. Hi, Roberta. I just sent your uh, mm -hmm. uh, jar yesterday. So <laughs> um, we are having a blessed uh, uh, week. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you have a blessed week too. Uh, and Ted. Hi, Ted. Um, Hello. Yes, um, uh, Roberta, I think you have a, a, a channel if you want to share uh, your YouTube channel with us uh, here. In, if you want to put the link, um, feel free to do it. Okay, uh, anything else? What's the next one, <laughs> Anira? Well, the next one for me is the mandrel. Uh, you know, we always come across rings. Mm -hmm. so we definitely need, and then this is what the mandrel is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and we all we're, because we're always uh, res, you know finding rings and for for re reselling ring, rings we definitely need, need to put what size it is. So yeah, this not only is used to uh, you know size to find out what the size it is. Sometimes you'll have jewelry you know that's bent up you know where this area it's not this ring something thinner, <laughs> a little bit bent and when you know when you push down on it a little bit, uh, it will it will fix it up for you. So yeah, the, I would say the mandrel because. Of, we need to know what size uh, the rings are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I ha I had one too. Uh, mm -hmm. I was thinking of buying a, um, a similar item that will measure the bracelet. Uh, I saw something, you know, like a cone shape. Yes. And it tells you exactly uh, the, especially with the bangles, it's so so yes. difficult sometimes to to measure them. I always do the inside diameter on on the bangles. Uh, yeah. not the outside that's also another thing that uh, I think I, but I think I think that when you're the one you're saying is that well, that's just I think for bangles only and mm -hmm. and just like and and just regular you know string bracelets uh, that doesn't mm -hmm. work for you know cuffs and things like that but it is mm -hmm. it is still something that it's good to have yeah yes it is yeah okay so yeah so we talked about the testing kit and the mandrel uh, my next what is my next one oh 
I, I, I need, I cannot live without this one uh, with the scale because when you guys ship items, yes, uh, you need a scale. And most of the time, uh, the jewelry are in between three ounces or four ounces, something like that. But when you do lots or when you ship internationally, mm -hmm. you need to be precise and you need to know exactly how much is it. So it's always good to have a, a scale. Um, and I bought this one from, uh, I think it's, it was eBay. Yeah, so, mine I think was from Costco. Mm -hmm. but they have them everywhere. It's not very expensive. And you can you can start out with, you know, if you're not, if you're not selling you know, multi multiple amounts, amounts of jewelry. If you're selling mm -hmm. just five piece, you can get the little tiny one too. That's just made for jewelry. Mm -hmm. those, those are, I think run from five to $7. Mm -hmm. uh, you, yeah. can, you can ju just start out with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I wanted to mention this mandrel, uh, Lucia is going to put the link in. It comes with the wooden one as well. The, the link that we have is for, for, it comes with this and this one, and it comes with this little hammer. <laughs> <laughs> like and like i said it's it's something that's going to be needed you're going to eventually buy it because you will come across rings that are bent so you pretty much use this you know to push down on the ring a little bit to fix it if it's bent up mm -hmm. so we're going to add the link that includes all three of them mm -hmm. yeah mine is just a, a simple one so i don't have the hammer on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, yeah i came across a lot of rings that were all you know they, that were nice rings that needed to be fixed so i had to buy it anyway so what I what I did is, and I just bought the whole kit where it comes with everything. Yes. And you want to say hello, Mina? We have a, um, new people here. Yes. Uh, we have Perla. Uh, th thank you for coming in, Chris. Uh, Shama Raza, find aged, uh, find aged finds. Uh, we have uh, Nishana, hey, Nishana, uh, Francis, uh, Maria, me, and Deb Beach. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, es Esteline. Uh, here also and belinda mm -hmm. uh, sorry if i missed anyone <laughs> yeah. uh, and francis is asking where do you buy your acid test mine i bought it from amazon. I, think it was, I think it was amazon i, I might be wrong but uh, francis will leave the links in the in the description okay uh Anita, did you buy it on, uh, online yeah it's from amazon the link we have is for amazon yes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazon, it's good to get it from Amazon because you get it, you know, within one or two days. You don't have to wait very long for uh, from Amazon purchases. So we did mm -hmm. include that one, yes. Mm -hmm. If you have, I think, Amazon Prime, you get free shipping. Uh, but free shipping, some, yes. some of the items are already free shipping. So you don't mm -hmm. yes. you go ahead and check them, yeah. And Gina is asking, do you ladies sell, let me show this one. Do you ladies sell the jewelry on Etsy or where? Yes. Yes, definitely. Let's see. I mm -hmm. first I started out selling on eBay, and and I just switched to Etsy because I I like their policies better. Uh, mm -hmm. It's safer selling them there because you know the, the buyers from Etsy are serious buyers where you never have any trouble with your items as long as your uh, your, your descriptions are correct and your sizes are correct. You 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 won't have a problem. But mm -hmm. there are some items that you can't sell on Etsy. Uh, you know, the newer items, um, new things that are made new before the year 2000. So those I have, I, I have to, I, I do list those on eBay. But other than that, the mainly, my my main area mm -hmm. sell is Etsy. Mm -hmm. Etsy. Yes, mine too, Etsy. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of afraid of eBay. I'm not very comfortable with eBay and I don't trust the buyers sometimes. And I just had an auction uh, uh, last week and uh, the buyer didn't pay for for the item and it happened to me this is the second time that happened uh and uh i i don't know it's just um i don't know i trust etsy it's so so easy to list uh, mm -hmm. uh people are way more i think serious over there and yeah mm -hmm. serious buyers <laughs> serious buyers yes uh, yes Nargis is saying I sell on Poshmark, eBay, and Macari only. You might want to try Etsy too. I would go ahead mm -hmm. and try it. At first, I was skeptical. I didn't want to. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if I. Sh I wasn't sure if it had enough people watching. I wasn't sure if it had, you know, the you know, like like you know eBay. There's so many people uh, mm -hmm. that go to eBay first, and a lot of people don't know, didn't know about Etsy. Is why I was thinking maybe my items won't get seen. Mm -hmm. but, um, 
it's it's doing very well. I think it has to do with you know constantly listing, mm -hmm. up your store, listing and listing. The more you list, the more you'll notice that your sales are increasing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I never use Mercari, so I don't know anything about Mercari. I heard people are also selling on Bonanza. Yeah, um, and I know Kelly, uh, hip, hip flipping mama, she. Uh, open an account a few weeks ago and maybe we can invite her one one day and <clears throat> she can uh, tell us a little bit about Bonanza because I heard yeah. people are very happy with Bonanza. So <clears throat> I, I do you sell on Bonanza, Anita? No, I've I've I haven't sold anywhere besides eBay. Uh I, I've used Poshmark. Uh, I don't use it that much anymore because I'm using Etsy so much. I'm, I don't list any as, as many as on Poshmark. It's just mainly clothing or shoes that I have. And I don't have that, mm -hmm. but yeah, I've never, I've, ne I haven't listed on Macari or or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I would love to know more about them, of course. Yes, and we have a comment here. I can understand what are you saying about eBay. <coughs> Thank you for the advice. Uh, yes, so there, there's a bunch of scammers on on yeah. on eBay and yeah. people that are uh, bidding when we have auctions and they are not paying once the auction is done they they want the auction and they won't pay so that's right. at least that's what i'm talking about yeah like just like nishana is saying ebay has gone downhill so bad over the years yes they definitely mm -hmm. have i was, mm -hmm. I was really happy with it so many years ago when i started selling reselling mm -hmm. items i never had these kinds of problems that you know people are sometimes I, like recently uh, everyone right now that you hear that selling on ebay is having some kind of problem with either payments not being made or having returns that that don't make sense or or saying they haven't received the item or mm -hmm. all of it you know the yes. lot of problems on ebay yes yes uh, we have antonio um i think he is in uh writing in italian uh he's saying that uh, he likes our uh, program mm -hmm. uh, bravissima <laughs> thank you and lois and uh anybody else uh ginger spice hi teresa uh i th i think that's it mm -hmm. nishana is asking uh, do you post your items to pinterest uh, she's asking, oh, gina okay but uh, that's a good question i definitely post uh, items on pinterest and i think pinterest is like because it's connected to google i think it's very it, i think that it's a it's a great way to get your you know item out there and seen uh, it's definitely a good idea to go ahead if you don't have one to go ahead and and, and get it, get open up a Pinterest and start listing mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes I listing it's a share it's kind of like a share thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I don't I don't do it on Pinterest and uh, Instagram uh, I I don't have time for you know I think <laughs> it's too much to keep track of I know it's very it's very yeah. yes track of all those uh, platforms and all those social media you know net places it's a lot it's it's it really is a lot i haven't listed anything in my i haven't not listed i haven't posted anything in my instagram for maybe like weeks now mm -hmm. but yeah it's but it's definitely like to if you want to get your items seen that more places you have them the better and so, yes. and we understand that all of those things do take time yes mm -hmm. yes do, they do take time yes uh and if you start you mm -hmm. you can start small with like five items or uh, you know, and you see how 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 they go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Donna is asking, how do you know how to price items? Oh, this is a, a very uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> very popular question. <laughs> what is it? What people are asking us all the time. You wanna answer, Anita? Uh, for me, it's it depends on what the item is, and first I have to know like what what I I check by what the metal is. If it's a precious mm -hmm. metal, obviously it's going to be listed for a higher price. Uh, the next thing I do is research. I do research on the item to see if I can find the same item or a similar item. Or if it's if it has a maker's mark to see how much those items of that maker go for. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it, it's it all has to do a lot about what the what metal it's made of, and then also who who the artist is, and and, and definitely research. You need to do mm -hmm. yes. research. And, and the condition and the condition is very important to what condition mm -hmm. you're in. Yes, I always start with the condition and I look at uh, an item and see if it's uh, uh, new or uh, if it has any signs of wear or scratches or uh, stuff like that. And um, I always clean and I try my best to send uh, 
the buyers uh, a clean uh, piece of jewelry. I do not send them tarnished or, uh, you know, not cleaned or washed a little bit or polished a little bit. So yeah. that's what I do. I always start with that. I always clean them and test them and polish them if they are silver. And then I can decide the price based on how that item looks after it was cleaned and polished. Right, Anita? Yes, definitely. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, Nargis is asking for Etsy. You don't have to pay uh, to list items. Uh, yes, you do. It's yes. 20 cents to list item for four months. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and you can put it kind of like auto auto way where it automatically lists for you. Or you can mm -hmm. put it manually where it'll ask you if you want to relist the item. So mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's, it's a really good it's really good 20 cents for four months. And the fees are a lot less than they are on, on eBay. So it's definitely a great place to try to list your items. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, uh, there is another comment here uh, from uh, hunt render hunters. From buyer's point of view, let me uh, put it up uh, so I can actually read it. Uh, <laughs> from buyer's point of view, thought I have bought much. And just recently, my issue with ads is that I can't make a bargain or offer, or I don't okay. know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. You know, uh, as far as that, as far as that goes, this is this is uh, this is how I think about it. If it's if somebody really wants that item, uh, they have a way to uh, to contact you through through Etsy. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they can send you a message asking you if you're willing to lower the price a little bit, or if you can give them a discount on it. If or, or they can make you an they can't make you an offer on the item itself, but they can contact you uh, through the you know through the uh, messages. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fun. A lot of messages from people asking if I can go down on the shipping a little bit or if I can go down on the item a little bit if they buy more than one item and I and you know I have worked with them and I have you know lowered prices on some of the items mm -hmm. the questions yeah they, they definitely have a way to contact you yes I got uh, yeah I got the same uh, you know they email uh, me and they ask uh, would you consider this uh, and usually I I always kind of consider and especially if they are uh, uh, regular customers mm -hmm. and I know that they will buy from me uh, in the future then yes I always uh, consider that or if it's something I also take in consideration if it's international because the shipping um, it's so expensive and yeah. Uh, Nishana is saying that you can say on in your Etsy listing that you have to uh, that you are willing to take offers on it. Mm -hmm. yes that's that yeah that you can do as well mm -hmm. yes say in the description somewhere you can say you're willing to take offers on it as well mm -hmm. i didn't know that thank you uh, uh nishana mm -hmm. yes um oh uh, sandra is asking <laughs> um, have you ever <laughs> thought about opening your own pawn shop <laughs> no, uh, no. yeah i actually yeah I, I've actually thought about opening my own little store. Uh, I don't know, if, uh, not necessarily a pawn shop, maybe more more like a gift shop, but that's more, you know, more into the future. Not not right now, no. Mm -hmm. Yes, the um, this one is considered, uh, yeah, a, a postal scale. Yes, this one. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and I will put the links um, mm -hmm. in the, in the description. Uh, I like this one. Uh, I, I started with my uh, kind of a kitchen scale at one point. <laughs> uh, but, um, then I decided, you know, this is way, way yeah. better. And it's not, it's not very expensive. Yes. Yeah. And then also when you're, when you're uh, weighing the item, make sure you weigh it when it's also already packed inside of the box. <laughs> pack it, pack mm -hmm. it, and then, and then weigh it. And then what I do is I add a few more ounces to it. Just, you know, because ev every scale is different and it shows a different... Mm -hmm. different weights so i add, add a couple of more ounces to it uh mm -hmm. print out the shipping label yes yes um yes it, uh, okay so yeah not a pawn shop i i, I don't <laughs> think so uh, uh there is another question here let me uh show it uh do you want to uh, read it anita have either of you joined the team on etsy to help promote your shops uh what are other ways you you promote your shops, sales coupons, etc. Mm -hmm. um, no, I have I haven't uh, joined any team uh, in Etsy. Uh, the way the way I promote it is I, I I do it through my YouTube videos. Also, I do it in my I I 
posted in uh, on Twitter. I po posted on uh, and I post them posted in my jewelry group. Um, <laughs> you know, anywhere, anywhere, pretty much anywhere, anywhere you can, and you know, in any in social media pl different platforms. Mm -hmm. And I, I put them on on Instagram as well. Uh, mm -hmm. what I'll do is whatever I'm listing that day, I'll take pictures. Well, I already have the pictures. What I'll do is I'll make a little album saying these are the items that I have listed in my Etsy, and I'll put mm -hmm. it in my Instagram with all the pictures uh, that I took. And then I'll, and then I'll hash and it's important to use hashtags in places like that to hashtag it Etsy hashtag reseller, um, you know, hashtag whatever it is that you're selling turquoise hashtag sterling silver jewelry mm -hmm. and somebody in there will see it and, and, and we'll, we'll be interested in it and we'll, we'll be able to find it that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, I didn't join any uh, any team on Etsy or any group. Mm -hmm. I do not promote my my listings. Mm -hmm. uh, just like Anita said, uh, you know, people kind of are coming from my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And um, I did some uh, sales and coupons. And I'm actually thinking of doing, uh, I, I used to have it for like a few months, the 10% off uh, for all my uh, uh, YouTubers viewers. So uh, I'm thinking of adding that one to uh, from now on on each of my videos so that uh, whoever is watching the videos, uh, they can get a 10%. Yes. That's a good idea. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, and we'll share the IG. Uh, uh, yeah, the Instagram. Yeah, you guys, if you if you want to share your Instagrams or your Etsy, sure. again, please please do it. And our li links will be uh, in the description at the end of this video. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Anita's okay, and. Uh, Karis is saying, love your jewelry, Anita. You wear them so well. Thank you. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah, we love it. Well, we, 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 we keep a lot of them our, uh, for ourselves as well. And we, of course, we love wearing them. It's yes. Yes. Uh, do you, either of you, have a full-time job? Uh, go ahead, Anita. No, this is, this is what I do right now, full-time. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a part-time job. Hold on. It was not this one. It was a different one. <laughs> Where is it now? <laughs> um, yeah, I do work part time, um, and I yeah I'm I'm not quite happy, but yeah you gotta do what you gotta do right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're well, doing this full time. It gives me like you know I'm I'm able to do it whenever I want. It's like my own hours, and I I decide when I'm working, when I'm not working, and when to take vacations. Mm -hmm. So me it's pretty good you know especially with two small children it's it's it's, it's hard for me to to be able to go to a nine to five job because i don't have uh, anybody you know to stay with the kids and it's uh for, for me it's working for this this is what working for for right for right now it's fine mm -hmm. yes um so gianna um is saying hello to us and uh gianna if you want to leave your um uh link also because i know gianna is doing um Okay. Handmade jewelry, right? Am I right? Gianna, yes. Yes. She yeah. makes mm -hmm. beautiful beaded jewelry and she's making hair accessories right now too. I mm -hmm. saw some of them very pretty. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Put your link into as well, mm -hmm. Gianna. Yes, and Gina too. Um, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, Gina. I know. Yeah, you guys can go in, in the. Sorry, Nina, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I'm just seeing uh, seeing the, uh, Gina didn't put a link in. She just put in that her uh, Bolter mm -hmm. IG and Etsy are under the name Vintage Scarab. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you can also go uh, and put it in the comments, also in the video, not in the chat, because sometimes people are are not looking at the chat. But if you go and put it on the comments, then uh, we will be able to to see it, and other people that are watching after this they will be able to see it. So you'll have a, a little bit more exposure if you put them in the comments in the video. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Le Lenora is saying, I have a son with autism, I work from home. Yeah, I totally understand, me too. The same thing, my son has autism. So he needs my attention like 24 seven. Uh, it's yeah, I, I, I have I have to constantly be home watching him so is the reason why I'm able to do this and and it's working out great for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I totally uh, yeah. understand. Yeah. 
Yes, exactly. So any other uh, any other items, Anita? Any other essentials? <laughs> uh, I would say cleaning products, you know, polishing cloths and, 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 and things like that, like ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> And things and things we use for uh, as far as cleaning the jewelry. You know how mm -hmm. I say not to use the tarnix, <laughs> but I do have it for like you said for you know the chains and because those are very hard to clean and they break easily. Mm -hmm. I do what the what the chains is the uh, not nothing with stones any nothing like that. But as far as you know the chains go and because they're so brittle and and easy to break, uh, just like Lucia said, I did dip them out really fast, wash mm -hmm. them really fast. Mm -hmm. So I do have that I do have that still. Uh, the polishing cloths I have, um, I use ketchup, mm -hmm. and, I, and then also the down soap for uh, for the for the um, mm -hmm. statement pieces and and jewelry that that are not of precious metals. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, me too. And I'm I I'm doing a uh, uh, I'm gonna do a review about the uh, ultrasonic uh, machine that my kids bought yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. And to be honest, you guys, I'm not very impressed. I, I don't know. I probably I was expecting miracles or something, but for the last three four days, I'm keep testing and I'm keep trying it, and I want to do a very honest review. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I'm going back to my uh, old and traditional way of cleaning them with baking soda, vinegar, and uh, salt. And uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so yes, the cleaning products definitely next, mm -hmm. and and also like the shipping supplies as well that you need. Uh, and oh, mm -hmm. one more thing I wanted to mention that you guys should also get is this uh, thin nose plier. <laughs> this is this I use this a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, jewelry uh, sometimes you'll find one that's not broken. It's just like you know the loop is a little bit too loose or widened or pulled, and you just you know to basically to fix loops and, you know, to close and to, you know, secure loops. Um, I use this a lot. This is something that you need as well, you know, to fix, fix things that are, uh, that have come, come apart. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And, 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 and the shipping supplies, uh, what, what kind of shipping supplies do you use? Uh, Lucia? I use the, um, bubble wrap. I buy my bubble wrap in a big, uh, uh big, uh, whatever, rolls. And, <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> I was making a joke yesterday and said, "Do you need a hug?" Because <laughs> yeah, I was my, my role. Um, yeah, and I use the uh, bubble um, padded uh, envelopes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to recycle when I when I'm going at work, and they have uh, little boxes. You know, I always uh, take those ones, and I said, "These are for me." Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's what I use, and tissue paper and boxes, oh, yeah. little boxes that I bought. I buy them online uh, in different dimensions depending on um, the items. Yes, uh, um, I, me too. The bubble wrap. We're gonna include the link. Uh, it comes like the four big, huge like the bubble wraps mm -hmm. uh, or four ro four rolls. They come in mm -hmm. they come in different sizes, and and they're real. The ones I I have are really good. The one we're gonna add the link to. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot for your money and it's not very expensive and it is mm -hmm. on and will you will get it very mm -hmm. quick and uh and also like what she said tissue paper i need a lot of don't don't go too you know crazy with the tissue paper you can just mm -hmm. use plastic white ones maybe once in a while you know during the holidays you can use the orange or the red or the christmasy colors but i the basic white white color is fine and the boxes i use the the six by four by four mm -hmm. Because that's that's like the you know the, let me show you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let me show you. Um, see, this is the box that I use, which is very lightweight and very small. This is perfect for jewelry. I just put it in here. You know, if it's more than one item, or if it's something that's uh, very fragile, or a ring, or something that I don't want to get damaged, I just put it in tissue paper, or bubble wrap it, and put it in there. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have those ones too. I use yeah. them when I have like uh, big necklaces or something that they don't fit in a, uh, in a jewelry in a jewelry boxes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. yeah, and mm -hmm. always make sure you put uh, enough bubble wrap. Make sure you separate your jewelry when you're uh, shipping. Uh, your, when you're shipping jewelry, don't don't put like a whole bunch of jewelry together. Make sure that's what the that's what the uh, tissue paper is for to separate the jewelry. So. <laughs> touch each other and doesn't cause so much. Just, mm -hmm. just to make sure that you know the people are that are buying the items it's important to them 
uh, to get mm -hmm. them in good condition. So um, yeah. Yeah, make sure that they're safe, uh, safely uh, shipped to them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay, I have another question here from Lenora. Did you do a video on painting the charts? Uh, I did, I had a few attempts uh, and then my computer broke. So I kind of lost, I think I lost it. I don't know, my husband has the drive, I think, or what, what do you call that? So he's yeah. trying to recover uh, the data and uh, probably I'm gonna start all over again. I still have paint on my kitchen floor from the, <laughs> from the process so uh, maybe when the summer is uh, here i can do it outside and i don't have to worry about uh, spilling paint all over my my place but i'm planning on doing it too and uh nishana is asking uh, what size is the box anita six by four by four okay okay um, right oh hi jennifer and estelle and there is another question from Caris. Uh, do okay, okay, you guys. I'm sorry, but I need to put it up because uh, I can't see it. It's so small. <laughs> do either of you get nine to five silver? And can I ask where are you? I'm in England. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Anita. I'm in California, Glendale. Mm -hmm. And I am in Oregon, Portland. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we do we do get we do get a lot a lot of silver depending on where we're looking for them and where we're buying them. Sometimes we get all costume jewelry. Sometimes we purchase all sterling silver. Mm -hmm. It depends on you know where we're getting it and what we're uh, you know uh, what store mm -hmm. we're buying them. If we're buying them individually, uh, but we do we do definitely get a lot of silver. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I do yeah get a lot of silver. Oh, Gianna said, saying both you ladies have uh, always excellent, <laughs> excellency. I think she wants to say, yeah, my purpose is immaculately wrapped. Uh, we are trying because I think, uh, at least uh, I'm talking from my point of view, uh, I would like to kind of receive the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So every time I'm thinking in my, in my head, it's like, uh, what would I like uh, the experience to be? Right, Anita? What, right. Definitely. You have to look at it that way that, you know, you're get, sending this, uh, this uh, box to yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That if you would open it up, would you be happy with what you got, what, what you got if it was sent by somebody else? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. It's very important to put a little bit of extra uh, attention uh, and uh, make it a little bit special because you're not selling on eBay or, you know, on Facebook group or whatever. It, mm -hmm. it, it's uh, it's something special, and somebody spent money on it. And you cannot just send it in a, a Ziploc bag, and no. yeah, it, it needs to be a little bit. Uh, yes, and I always include a little tiny gift with the item purchased, and I always put mm -hmm. in a little thank you heart, you know, to so the I, the buyer feels appreciated, and I appreciate that they bought it. So it's definitely mm -hmm. it's something yeah. to send out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it is very important. Uh, yes. Um, oh, thank you, Estelle. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, any other supplies, Anita? Um, I'm thinking right now. <laughs> the tape, definitely tape. We need. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, I I buy tape like six uh, from, from my. Um, I I don't buy it from Amazon. I don't know how much it is on Amazon, but you definitely need good tape because it's better to buy like the good, uh, good thick, uh, strong mm -hmm. tape. And for you to buy those brittle ones that keep breaking and breaking. So you know, what I do is I just get like a six pack from the local stores. But I know that they have great ones on Amazon as well. So mm -hmm. tape, you definitely need tape. Um, I, I don't, this is not something that's, uh, you know, important to have when you're a new reseller. But if you, if you're, if you've been doing it for a while, it's important to also to get like a shipping label printer. Because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, eventually you'll have more sales and it'll get harder and harder for you to, you know, to cut cut the labels out with the regular printer. So I did invest in a Rolo printer. Um, it's very good, I love it. Uh, we, we're gonna include the link for that as well, the Rolo printer. Mm -hmm. And you wanna tell them about the gem tester, Lucia? Oh yeah, so that was my, <clears throat> that was my most expensive investment this year. <laughs> oh, except the camera and then the laptop and then other, you know, but we're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We're going to talk about reselling, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, this is my um, 
Presidium Gem Tester that I think it was the best investment that I did uh, for my business, to be honest. And for, for, for myself too, because um, I want to learn about uh, gemstone and it's very difficult these days to know which one is uh, glass and which one is uh, real gemstone. And especially the tiny little one in the, ear in the earrings or in the rings. So, uh, yeah, I think this is one of the, the best uh, items. But one mentioned though, I bought it uh, well, almost a year after I started uh, selling the jewelry because they were pretty expensive. So, yeah. what about you, Anita? Me, uh, the Presidium company sent it to me as a gift mm -hmm. uh, for me to do a do an unboxing and and uh, and review on it. And definitely, it's the best thing I ever received. Uh, it does come in handy every time I use it. Every time I get any kind of stone, I always check to make sure if it's if it's a gem or if it's glass. And just knowing the difference between those two is a big difference. So it's definitely something you you might want to invest in in the in the, in the near, you know in the future if you don't have it because like we said it is very it is pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. so it might that's something that you want to invest in not as a mm -hmm. new reseller but eventually you you might want to get that as well. And we did include the link for that too. Yes, uh, yeah, definitely. Because sometimes I have bracelets that I think those stones are just glass, mm -hmm. and uh, to my surprise, most of the time they are not. And you know that it, it's it's very important to know what are you selling and um, very mm -hmm. uh, like you said most of the time they're they're not I did I did one time get these uh, peacock earrings that were just on gold tone uh, neck on, on a gold on gold tone metal and I and I was looking at the stones look so nice and I'm thinking you know and after I got the gem tester I did test the stones. And they were all rubies, real rubies. <laughs> and I was shocked that they were on, on, on just on gold tone. So it's, 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 it's good to have, you know, you can test things that you're suspicious about, wondering if they are, if they are real gemstones. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's definitely great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have another question from Lenora. I'm gonna put it up here. Uh, how, no, this, well, this one, sorry. Oh, we'll get to the, the, the next one. <laughs> uh, how do you sell your mm -hmm. not your jewelry? up to part three yeah go ahead yeah. um you, you know this uh, the jewelry that you know uh the jewelry that that's not up to par we, i don't really sell those what i do is i put them in in, in craft lots you know and and if you mean up not up to par like damaged or have wear on mm -hmm. them yeah those are those are items that i will put in, in, in into, the, into the craft lots i only mm -hmm. i only sell the jewelry that i put up for selling uh is uh, all of them have to be really good clean you know, if they have scratches here and there, and I know that they're still good, I will mention that they have scratches and where they are. I will take pictures of the scratch. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if it's something, yeah, that's that's not good. I will put it in a craft lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, me, me too. Yeah, craft craft lots. Um, that's what I do. Or if they need like uh, a little bit of cleaning, then I, I will clean them and. Uh, I will decide, you know, after because sometimes, um, especially with items that are coming from the jar, um, it's not noticeable when we do the video. Right. At least in, in my opinion, because I'm so my mind is all over the place, and sometimes I don't think, you know, that a stone is missing or uh, there are a little bit of discoloration and stuff like that. But after I finish the video and I look, you know, I pay a close close attention to uh, what I have. Um, you know, not all the time, you know, they are not, you know, up to par, like she said. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that happens to me a lot too. Like with the, when you're showing the jewelry, they look fine and great on, on, on the on the screen. And as you're cleaning them, you notice, oh no, it's all scratched up. You know, the stone is all scratches or it's damaged or there's a chip on it. Uh, there was one mm -hmm. I, when I was cleaning it and it broke in my hand. I'm like, oh my God, I'm glad it broke here. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. It happened to me too. Uh, uh, Lenora saying that, no, I meant craft jars or not. Yes, we, we sell them um, mm -hmm. in bags. I usually put them in, in, in bags, uh, like four pounds or... Uh, I don't put them in jar, the crafting lots. I usually put them in, uh, in Ziploc bags. Yeah, and I'm trying to make a bag that will fit into a flat padded uh, envelope uh, for the eight ninety dollars. I think shipping. That's kind of my 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 goal. 
Uh, as far as craft lots go for me, I don't have too many craft lots. Very rarely I'll have a craft lot uh, because I keep a lot of the items. Uh, a lot of the <laughs> items I'll keep, them, I, I'll keep them because I do I do, uh, do do crafting with jewelry. So I do keep a lot of them for myself. Uh, so, yeah, so I don't have too many when it comes to craft lots. Maybe just like beaded necklaces and things like that I'll put in, in a craft lot. <laughs> as far as brooches goes and earrings, I, I do keep those for craft uh, for crafting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And there was another one here, another question from Kathy. How do you manage vacation when reselling? Uh, Anita, do you have a vacation? <laughs> well, if, if, you're, if you're talking about like putting the, vaca the store on vacation, you can mm -hmm. put the store on vacation mode. Yes. Uh, but uh, as far as taking vacations, I, I just give myself a vacation when I think I need one. Mm -hmm. Recently, I, I took one, uh, you know, this new year, just 10 days off of YouTube mm -hmm. and off of off of reselling, mm -hmm. it's it's a, if you if you're doing it, uh, uh, you know you you it's up to you as a reseller when you want to take your vacation. You can just take it anytime mm -hmm. that you yes. need one. Yes, I did the same on on my Etsy store when I went to Romania this uh, last last year. It was for a month. Uh, the whole store was on uh, vacation, so I didn't have any sales, and um, so you have an option on Etsy to put your store on vacation. Yeah. And like Anita said, you know, uh, during the holidays, I just decided, you know, I need a break. So I just took a break. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, see, it, it, it doesn't have to be a vacation. Like sometimes I feel like, okay, I'm a little bit overwhelmed right now. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to take two days off and, you know, just take take the two days, whatever you whatever you need. And and please don't overwhelm yourselves. When you feel mm -hmm. like you need, you need the vacation, you definitely do. Then that means you do need it. Yes, just go ahead and, and it's okay to take a day off of it and put everything away and just lay down for do nothing for a whole day. Uh, you know, whatever whatever you feel uh, is going to be good for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Or so, um, uh, just a, a clarification here. So we did we were on vacation, but uh, we uh, in during Christmas uh, holiday season, but we were shipping items, right, Anita? So yeah. we were just. Uh, kind of on a break from listing and uh, and doing other stuff with the jewelry. But if I had an order, then I, I was, uh, yeah, I was uh, yeah. able to ship that, uh, but just yeah. not. Yeah, we weren't putting new items up. We weren't list taking pictures. We were taking a break from the actual, you know, process of listing. But whatever was up there, we were able to still ship out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, you were able to ship. Or you can ask for some help if you trust somebody, like you have a family member that can help you while you're on vacation and you don't want to put it on vacation. <laughs> that's also, yeah, that's also fine. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, or you can also change your uh, handling time. That That's true too, Dina, yes. Yes. Um, okay. How do you set your... You want me to put this one here, Anita? Francis, is, or how do you set or hang up your camera? Yeah, and do you use a camcorder with your cell phone? Would you explain? Mm. Uh, no, I don't use. I I have a camera. I, I don't use the computer or the my phone right now. So I have a camera. It's a Sony or something, and I have my tripod. That's how you call it. Yes, the tripod. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I can do a video showing you how how I. Uh, how I how I use it. I don't have a microphone or anything. No. Extra. Just just the camera and the tripod. That's all mm -hmm. I that's all I have. And yeah. three lights uh, you know surrounding me that uh they are so bright. <laughs> yeah. See. Yeah. Yeah. I just I just use like the natural lighting that I have or if it's dark, I just use my chandelier and like you like you do just the tri just the tripod and then the Logitech camera I have. Mm -hmm. Yes. I uh um Yes, I can. Well, I can do a video, and you can do a video too, Anita, and show them how um, how we do it. But go ahead. I, I was gonna say, in the as like they're when they're talking about cameras, that's another thing that you need uh, a a good camera to take your pictures uh, for your items that are your that you are listing. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I'm using my my cell phone uh, for the pictures. Uh, it's an Apple phone, so it's, it takes pretty good pictures. It does really good zooms. So I, I personally just I've never I've, I've I've never used another camera besides the cell phone. I only use my cell phone for the pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know 
uh, float with chairs using yeah, it. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm using my phone. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't use the camera. I just use my phone for the pictures, yes. And for the videos, I'm using the uh, camera. Mm -hmm. Yes. Logitech. Mm -hmm. Are you using the Logitech too? No, mine is a Sony, I think. Mm -hmm something like that yeah it's, it's yeah, okay so just any 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 webcam that you guys can you guys can get or anything affordable to you if you're gonna do videos that is any webcam and a tripod at one point i didn't even have a tripod i just put the camera on, on one of the on one of the you know uh vases that i had or mm -hmm. tall if you have something tall just put it on there with tape it's fine uh, but uh, yeah other than uh, other than that you don't really need anything except the webcam mm -hmm to put it on uh, that's all and that's only if you're doing videos if you're doing videos you don't even need that yes that's what i started to uh, uh when i was starting the youtube with my with my phone it was on top of my uh a candle i had a tall candle holder <laughs> my mine is an elephant <laughs> so, so i was kind of trying to incline because it was laying flat like this so i had to give her a little bit of angle so i was using makeup sponges you know those ones to kind of give it so yeah, I was creative. Um, and I figured out you just to get creative. You know, you have to. And I was doing that for almost two months uh, yeah. until my husband saw it one day and he was like, "Honey, you need a camera." <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is not the way to do it. And he said, "Well, it's working right now." So <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's another question here. If, uh, let me show you. Uh, if the thrift store don't have jars, what would you be the best way to start? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, answer, if yeah, if they don't have jar, jars, you can always do yard sales. Uh, you know, uh, just get them individually. Uh, there's church stores that you can you can go to. Mm -hmm. um, you can go. You can you can buy them online uh, from other resellers. Uh, you, there's many different 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 things you can do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, you can definitely go online and you can also check your pawn shops and jewelry shops. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. they have, uh, uh, they sell, you know, in boxes. You can go and dig through their boxes. You, all you have to do is go and ask. Yeah, and yes, definitely ask. Sometimes they have things in the back, believe it or not, that if you ask them, they will go bring it, that they haven't mm -hmm. yeah. asked them for it, especially mm -hmm. yard sales too. Uh, there, I, there have been yard sales that I've gone to, and I've asked, how, "Do you have any jewelry?" They said, "Hang on, let me bring it," <laughs> and they and they just go bring it from the sites. And definitely, it's good to ask anywhere if, if they have it or not. Yes, <laughs> uh, Dina, say I remember when you had to brush uh, because your phone would run out of time. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and it was pretty difficult to upload from the phone to upload the videos on on YouTube. Uh, so it took me a while to learn how to upload them and. Yeah, but you know, you, we're getting better. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. What do you sell jewelry from jars? Uh, that's another question, Anita. Uh, so we do sell them on Etsy. Where do you sell jewelry from jars? Yeah, uh, on Etsy and uh, directly. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm talking about myself right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, you, Anita. Yeah, I, I sell them on Etsy too, but I don't really sell jars. I just do like, like, let's say I ha at one point, I don't have them right now in my store, but I did have, you know, the 20 piece slots, the 15 piece slots, uh, where they're all nice wearable jewelry that I lotted up and added a silver item to and, and put them in my store that way. Uh, but yeah, but I, I don't do that many jewelry jars, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the items from the jewelry, right? Mm -hmm. I think she was talking about the items from the jewelry. Yes, and if you guys see something uh, in the videos and you want, you can always email us and let us know, and we can list it on Etsy or we can sell it directly to you. Depends on you know uh, the situation. But this is how I started actually. You know, people were uh, emailing me uh, after the videos uh, and asking me about prices and. Uh, selling it to, to them. Mm -hmm. I take those. Anything else? What is Mashana saying? Uh, I take the Which one? I take the listing titles and make a package with it. 
then put items in number. Oh, she's oh, she's labeling them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a, yeah, definitely. You need to have uh, that's another thing that you need to have a system. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know how yes. you're, how you're storing your items that you've listed. Uh, mm -hmm. What I what I do is I separate them by uh, by you know rings and earrings mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and things to yeah to start out with. But when it gets too much, you already have to start sorting them by color as well. Yes. Yeah, me too. I don't have that much right now in my inventory, probably like around 80 items. So it's pretty easy to, to keep track of them. Uh, but in the future, I think that's a, that's a very good idea. So just kind of put a label and put it in the bag. And that, that's really, yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. Uh, Colleen is asking, do you, either of you ever keep some of the nicer pieces for yourselves? <laughs> yes. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Yeah. The, yeah, there are some pieces that are so unique and so rare that we sometimes I'll think I'm, I'm never going to find something like that again and I will keep it for myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, yeah, we do find some of those pieces definitely. Um, yeah. I, I keep a lot of them. Like, <laughs> I'm more than I should. <laughs> Me too. I agree. You know, I have so many, uh, but I, I, I can let go. It's something that. You know, it's really hard to let go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the fun of uh, going through the jewelry jars because you're always, you know, excited and then you're always thinking, "Oh, I can keep this for myself. Oh, I can list this one." At least that's what happens with me when I'm filming. You know, my mind is all over the place and thinking, "Oh, this goes to Nancy. This goes into the crafting lot. This goes testing. This, you know, <laughs> and this goes to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is mine." <laughs> yeah, this is my, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. If I get out of focus, you guys, I, I you know, I, I apologize, but my mind is all over the place, <laughs> thinking ahead. You know? yeah. um, Jenny, Jenny is asking, mm -hmm. how do you know the pieces from jars are vintage? Mm -hmm. um, uh, de depending on the look of the piece, the clasp, most of the time what the clasp is made of, if they have a designer sign mark on it. Uh, yeah, from, from the look of it, you know, how it looks is, you know, you can sometimes you can, you know, just by looking at it, you can tell if the piece is vintage or not. If you, if you can't, you, you might want to check, you know, the clasp area or how the clasp is made. Some of the, uh, you know, some of the, um, there, there are some clasps that are older than others. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, and as far as the earrings go, uh, some of the backs are different. The vintage ones are back. Some, you know, the clip-ons they have, you know, the screw backs obviously are older ones. Mm -hmm. I, I just look at, you know, basically what they look like. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially with the brooches, uh, you need to look at the back and then the, the the clasp and how are they made. There are different different shapes. And also, like Anita said, I look for the clasp. And I also look at the design because some of the uh, vintage ones are so well made and you, mm -hmm. you just you just feel it you just see it you don't even have to you know doubt yourself yeah. um, but if they have a marking you know that's even better because they will help you a lot <laughs> um, yeah but if they're not marked then uh, start researching and type keywords mm -hmm. and describe it and uh, similar items will show up and yeah yeah, yeah. There, so, there, there's, there's a lot of uh, you know websites you can go to for marks Mm -hmm. like, and you can also go to uh, different jewelry groups. You can always follow my jewelry group, where you know a lot of a lot of uh, items have been identified there. Yes. <laughs> where yeah, if you don't know something, take pictures of them. Use jewelry groups. You know, going to different websites that tell you about marks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Several exactly. different mm -hmm. Yes. So researching is very very important. Mm -hmm. And there is another question here that. Uh, um, could you explain about the testing? What's the best way to test them? Okay, yeah, we can explain that too, Anita, if you wanna start. You can go ahead and explain that. I'm gonna okay. go to for just one second and I'll be right back. Okay, yes, so mine, what is my, so what I'm using here, I'm using the asset test. Um, this one, the Puri test, and this one comes with um, different uh, little bottles for, gold 18 carat uh, 14 12 10 and also uh, one bottle for silver and i think it's one for platinum um <clears throat> and i i like to use the 18 carat uh, gold uh, 
uh, bottle for testing the uh, silver because uh, when it's silver, um, if you scratch on that uh, that little stone, you scratch a little bit uh, on the stone, and if you put the acid on top, it will turn kind of a milkish, whitish, almost opalescent color. And to me, that's the, uh, in my opinion, that's the best way to do it because um, I try with the silver one and you have to look at the cotton and you have to kind of make sure that it's uh, turns a little bit brownish. So it's kind of hard for me to explain uh, without uh, showing you what I'm doing. Um, but we did, I think I did a, a video and Anita also has a video. Yeah. If you guys want to watch, then maybe we could put the links, Anita, in also in the descriptions for those videos. Okay. And yes. um, yeah, so that's, uh, so in my opinion, the best way to test something is to use the acid test. And it won't damage the, the items because you're just making a tiny little yes, scratch. Tiny. So, yes. It won't be noticeable on the on the on the jewelry, uh, but uh, to me, that's that's the best that's the best way to to test it. Anita, yeah, if you're and this also when you're testing the jewelry on the stone, if let's say it's a ring, use the bottom like the bottom you know corner. Just only make a little light scratch. Don't don't go you know scratch too much. Uh, use areas where they're not visible. Mm -hmm. uh, the jewelry and as far as necklaces go use the backs back areas mm -hmm. and you know just use areas where it's not in the front of the jewelry so there mm -hmm. don't cause any scratches mm -hmm. and yes the acid test works really great and uh, yes. it's very important to have especially while when selling jewelry yes and also another important thing is when you're testing earrings sometimes the hooks you know so i always test the hooks or the backs mm -hmm. uh, or the posts not mm -hmm. just uh, just the, the the earring, and sometimes the the bags are not sterling silver; mm -hmm. they are just you know regular prop bags or something. So uh, yeah, that's another thing that you need to keep in mind. I always purchase the the bags, the sterling silver bags from uh, from eBay because <laughs> I want to send them with the uh, sterling silver bags also. And also, when it comes to uh, gold gold earrings, the ones that are lever back. With the lever back clasps mm -hmm. sometimes those are magnetic i know a lot of people uh you, you know take the magnet to it and the magnet will pick it up but it does say 14 karat they have a little piece inside of the inside of the, the, the lever mm -hmm. that metal is not gold I, i'm not sure what metal it is but the magnet does pick it up but those are gold earrings so if, if, it, if the mm -hmm. magnet is it open it up and check and see if there's kind of like a silver color little metal inside mm -hmm. of the if there is, that's what's catching the magnet, not not mm -hmm. uh, the item yeah. itself. Yes, and to me, my biggest fear, and it's when they are silver plated, it's mm -hmm. so difficult to me sometimes to 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 tell if it's silver plated or not. So you need to do the uh, magnet test and the acid test, and you, with my loop, I'm looking to see if there are any uh, you know uh, discolorations or where. So yeah. And also, I want to mention that if something is not marked 925, like I know a lot of native pieces mm -hmm. are marked, and uh, and a lot of people don't know that, you know, unmarked jewelry are sterling silver. Mm -hmm. If they're not marked, please go ahead and test them if you could tell that, you know, it's a real stone on. And if it's because a, lo a lot of artisans didn't mark their pieces. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah, test those as well. Yes. And there are also, I found a lot of pieces that they were marked. Um, and vice versa <laughs> and they were you know when i tested them and a, a bunch of them they were nine to five mexico and i was thinking that you know that even if you look at the the item you kind of you can tell that it's not something is not quite right, right over there so yeah they're, they're kind of too shiny they look mm -hmm. too good yes. to silver and silver is a very soft metal if mm -hmm. you if you have your uh little stone and you're and you're you know you're making a scratch. If it's very easily making a scratch, kind of like a crayon, that that's mm -hmm. that's that's it's going to be silver. If you're mm -hmm. having a hard time scratching it, you know you can't get a scratch on. Most likely, chances are that's not going to be silver. Yes, uh, and a lot of a hundred percent of the time, mine that's not silver because silver is very soft and it's easy to scratch. It, yes, and go to it's the same thing. You can you can just tell by you know by the scratch uh, if it's. Uh, gold or because they are they are soft metals both gold and if, if, yes and if you scratch it and you see kind of like a copper color uh 
copper color on the stone. Don't even test it. That's not silver. It needs mm -hmm. to be a silver line. It needs to be a silver scratch. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Kathleen is asking, uh, uh, she's saying that she had trouble with my silver acid. Um, does the acid go bad quickly? Depends when you bought it, uh, Kathleen. Yeah. yeah. It, and, and then, it, you know what? Sometimes you might even get an acid that came bad. So definitely take a piece of jewelry that you know is sterling silver and test it with that before you do any kind of testing. Because you because it might come and it's brand new. You open it up and it's bad and you don't know. Mm -hmm. so definitely yeah. test something that you already know is sterling before you start your testing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Usually I, I had mine for, you know, like six, seven months. Mm -hmm. Mine uh, lasts about that much too, about mm -hmm. four to six yes. months it will last. Mm -hmm. Because what I do is I, after I use it, I, I, I put the drop and I always... Uh, while I'm waiting, I, I put the drop, I wait, I, I close it really fast. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, but you never know. I mean, the company might have had a problem and, you know, it came back. I've never had that problem, but you just go ahead and test something you already know before you test anything. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or maybe they are not, they are not silver. Yeah. If they are not marked or even if they are marked, that doesn't mean that they are silver or gold. So don't trust the marks. Uh, yes. Follow the, you know, follow the, the steps or you know what you can do you can also go to a jewelry shop i always especially with my gold items i always go to a jewelry shop or to a pawn shop and ask them could you guys please test this for me and it's free so maybe you should go and see uh what they are telling you and then you know maybe maybe this will help i'm thinking yes mm -hmm. uh gianna's uh letting us know that some uh, native american are marked Scratch made by the artist or a divot, which looks like the marker never left a marking. Okay, thank you, Gianna. That's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the tip. Sometimes, yeah, they do take something and you just scratch something in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, uh, flea markets, yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. In the summer, because here right now we don't have flea markets. I don't even know if we have flea markets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at, yeah. One, at one point, I did get a few nice pieces from Shop Goodwill, sterling pieces. I did get a lot of nice pieces, but right now, the you know, I stopped buying from uh, from them because I I did notice that you know, uh, the more the more I purchased from them, the more pieces were starting, the, the more re mm -hmm. recent ones were starting to come broken or cracked. Mm -hmm. or, yeah there was something wrong with them so it's it's always a good idea to purchase something that you see um when yeah especially if you're re, uh, if you're starting out and you're new at this uh, mm -hmm. it's better you know if the pieces in front of you you see it you know it's not broken you know it's not cracked mm -hmm. start out getting pieces that you know that you're seeing uh before purchasing mm -hmm. yes but when it comes to lots you do you will get things that are broken if you're getting them from places that you're not seeing anything mm -hmm. yeah and there is another point here from struggle forever. You have to go at it again and again, and you get an eye for it. Identification. Yes, I agree. The more you work with them, the more, the more you, you know, the more knowledgeable you, you became. And yeah. also another thing that uh, I know me and Anita were talking, the smell. Um, if you if you kind of rub it on your on your on your hands, and it kind of smells. Uh, you could tell, yeah. Mildly kind of a, a, a smell then. It's definitely not uh, silver or gold because they don't smell silver and gold. They don't. They don't have a smell. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Any other questions, Anina? Uh, I'm looking over here. That's all I see for now. <clears throat> um, Francis is talking about rhinestones. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Where would I be able to get rhinestones that will match? Um, um, Depends on how old the piece is. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's something new, you could probably get it at Michael's or your local craft store. Will have piece it. Will have mm -hmm. the. But if it's an older piece, that yeah, that's going to be a very hard to find uh, older uh, rhinestones. Mm -hmm. Yes, or maybe uh, you can go to to um, again like antique shops and look for uh, you know other jewelry that they have. They might have bags with jewelry and mm -hmm. or vintage, and you can go and ask them if they you know if. They have bags stuff. I know that some of the antique uh, shops here, um, they do have. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
And that's kind of weird to me because I always wondered why, you know, I always see people buying jewelry that are missing stones, you know, the old vintage brooches, mm -hmm. missing stones. And I always wondered why are they buying stones, uh, you know, uh, brooches mm -hmm. things with missing stones. Now I understand because it's, you know, the older pieces mm -hmm. that are hard to find. What they do is they harvest them. They, mm -hmm. they take the stones out and they use it to repair mm -hmm. other jewelry is the reason why they're buying uh, pieces, especially from the same makers that probably use the same kind of stones mm -hmm. uh, to repair one that they have already that's missing. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Katie Phillips said the tarnish on silver will smell. Uh, yes, it will smell. Yes. Uh, but if you clean it and then you, uh, if you don't have an acid test or anything and you yeah. clean it and you, you smell it, it won't smell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, Kathy, for letting us know. And Jennifer, hold on, let me hide this one. Sure. We are learning a lot. I, I, I love this chit chat because we are actually learning from, from you guys. Um, Jennifer saying, oh, no, this one. Okay. What is it? My last biggest found in a flea market was a 18K gold chain. I bought it for 100 yen and sold it for 36,000 yen. Wow. wow, that was a nice find. Congratulations. That was a good flip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what is that? Where is that flea market? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe we can visit too. Um, I know. Jennifer is saying there are a few places online that sell vintage replacement stones. Yeah, yeah, you can do research and look for. Uh, I, I'm sure there are places that do sell them. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you yeah. know, you never, you never really know if it's the same size, if it's the same. Yeah. Shape. you mm -hmm. don't know if it's gonna be a perfect fit for what you have. So yes, yeah. I, I at one point I was um, saving all the brooches with the missing rhinestones or the clip-on earrings, all the vintage ones, because I was thinking that oh, I can fix this one or it's just that feeling that you don't want to let go because it's so beautiful and it's so yeah. uh, kind of old and you just want to hold to them. And I started, you know, at one point to look and to kind of try and fix them. And yeah. I'm like, I cannot do this. <laughs> no, me too. There's this really nice, big, like fish brooch that I have. That's a fish that's all pearls on it. <laughs> Three of the pearls are missing. I can't find pearls that are like the same size that fit exactly. I've tried putting like, you know, ones that I think will work. Either the colors aren't right or the size is right. Or you can tell that it's been replaced. Mm, yes. Yeah, so it's very, it's very hard once, you know, the stone, <laughs> It's very hard to make it look original and to make it look like that's how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's better, in my opinion, what, what I was thinking of doing it is actually take uh, a few other uh, rhinestones from, uh, you know, and kind of make my own design. <laughs> Instead of putting a pink uh, rhinestone, well, I can put a red one and, you know, but that's a lot of work, you guys. And yeah, it will be fun, but. Uh, matching a, a rhinestone with the original eye. No, it's very hard. It's very hard, yes. Uh, struggle forever is saying it's in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we, we don't know if we're going to be there anytime soon. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I don't thank, think so. Thank you for letting us know where it is. Yes, thank you. And uh, bye, Nishana. Uh, bye, Nishana. See, see you next time. time. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, Xin. I'm gonna try and say this. Hang on. Exinalid. No, hang on. Exenilda. Exenilda. Yeah. What about stones? What would you recommend we take it to a jeweler? Yes, I would definitely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there's yeah. no, no there's no better guarantee than taking it to a jeweler. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I always take them when I when I have uh, when I have doubts and um, you know at least at some point they won't tell you like what happened with my uh, Cartier bracelet. They never said uh, it's real mm -hmm. but they said how much they want for it. <laughs> right? So that's when you don't want to sell it. <laughs> To me, that was like, okay, mm. that's a good sign. And you, then, you, yeah, you don't know what it is, but you want to buy it. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And on another place, uh, they the right off from the batch, they said, okay, we can give you 
fifty dollars or something for it, and I was like, "Why are you gonna give me fifty dollars? You know, if you're telling me that it's old, but yeah. you know, it was yeah, it's kind of wishy washy. So you also have to kind of be uh, cautious, cautious, and pay attention because if they want to buy it from you, that means it's real and they want it and it has value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. The, a jeweler knows everything. If they want to buy it from you, that means that what you have is real, for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Uh, um, he does. That, that's the, the, yeah, the Cartier bracelet. Um, I still have it. I still don't know if it's real or not. Maybe this week, I'm thinking, maybe this week I will send the pictures to that uh, to that site uh, to be, uh, uh, to authenticate uh or to let me know if it's real or not. But I just definitely gold. I would just keep it and Lucia, don't even get rid of that. Keep it forever. And then and one day you will come across a Cartier store and that's when you can actually walk in and they will let you yes. know if it's real or not. Mm -hmm. But just, even if it's real, I would just keep it. You know, that's a that's that's a great find. That's mm -hmm. something you should definitely keep for yourself. Yes, I, I was thinking the same. I don't want to yeah. uh, sell it because uh, we don't have a, a Cartier store here i don't even know if there is one in seattle maybe you know when if i if i travel to seattle maybe i can take it to seattle yeah. um and it was very kind of disappointing to me that they were not even uh considering uh helping me you know and like okay send us some pictures and we'll you know they instantly sent me to to their stores um uh, there was kind of a i don't know i i didn't like that you know that they were not you know, they didn't want to help me. They were just kind right. of probably because they have. I'm thinking they have so many. Uh, fake. They probably have it. They probably mm -hmm. have multiple, multiple mail emails or questions about yes. items. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it. That's I think that was my best. Uh, that was my best find so far. One day you're gonna. One day you're gonna run across the Cartier store. <laughs> right. Maybe when I go to Europe, I'm thinking maybe in Europe they will have stores. Or in yeah. an airport, right? Mm -hmm. Do they have cartoons? Yes, in the airports. Yes, they do. In airport, right. I've seen them in airports. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, they do have it. They have all all the big brands, the Louboutins, and they have, you know, the uh, Gucci's, and they have, mm -hmm. the, yes. they have all the all the big stores in, in that. Yes, that's what. Yeah, that's what they wanted. They wanted to give me on the jewelry shop. They said uh, fifty dollars, and uh, you know, they said that's the value of the gold, and I was like, no, because it was almost twenty. No, <laughs> more than twenty grams of gold, mm -hmm. and the pawn shop. They they ask me how much they want for it. Is it yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but it's, you know what? It's still good to take it to the jewelry store because they they have no choice but to tell you if it's gold or not. Yes, because that way you know that it's gold. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to buy. <laughs> yes, and, and I agree. Mm -hmm. Yes, but Dina, yeah, it was a bit snobbish, kind of uh, you know. Because uh, I, I emailed them after it was tested by me and by three other places. So I, you know, I told them it is real gold and it was, you know, tested at the jewelry shop and at the pawn shop and they told me it's gold. So, yeah, they, you know, so I didn't, yeah, anyway, that's okay. A bit snobbish, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have you ever heard of Dr. Lori? Yes, I have. Uh, and mm -hmm. I watch her channel. And yes, she's definitely good, fun to watch. And she mm -hmm. does talk a lot about jewelry. And especially if you're if you're a reseller, go ahead and sub to that channel because she will tell you what to look for, what to buy, what to sell. It's very it's a very informative channel and yeah, mm -hmm. and very yeah. fun to watch as well. Yes, I'm one of the subscribers and I do watch. Me too. And I I, um, I like the way she's. <laughs> she's, she's I like when she gets mad. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> she's fun to watch, definitely. Yeah, when she's asking people, are you wearing this? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just start laughing, yeah, because it's it's fun to watch. Okay. If there are no other questions, do you see any other questions, Anita? Then if not, I think we're uh we're good. We can call it a day today. <laughs> or any suggestions for the next um, chit chats? If you want to talk about something um, on, on next week. <laughs> okay. No, I did not negotiate, uh, Kathy. I do not negotiate because I don't know how to negotiate. First of all, 
I'm pretty shy when it comes to negotiating stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to sell it, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> There's there are some things that you just don't want to sell, but you know you want to know everything about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yes. want to know when it was made, if it's real, uh, you know how much the value is, everything you want to know, but you don't want to sell it. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't tell them. This is just between us uh, guys. I didn't told that it was from a jar. I just said, oh, you know, I have this bracelet, you know, and I didn't want them to know that it was from a jar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nargis is saying, how about tips on increasing sales? Um, my tip would be to list this list. <laughs> the more you list, yeah, the more the more your sales will increase. And then I think that goes for everybody. You know, everybody would agree with that. You mm -hmm. know, listing and listing more. The, yeah, try to list as much as you can a day. Yes. Uh, and the best clue, uh, Kathy, for me, I use E6000. Yes, me too. I, and even for jewelry, I don't repair jewelry, but if it's something that's for myself and I'm going to keep it and I just want the stone to be back on there, I do use a toothpick because you don't want much of that. I use a toothpick and just put like a little drop and then, you know, the stone I'll put back. And I, li I like it because it it, it, it really does, does keep a really good hold on it and it does dry clear. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing I don't like about it is, is it takes a long time for it to dry. And the smell smells so. And the smell is like toxic, intoxicating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, do it outdoors. Do it outdoors or near a window. Just put a little bit. Put it somewhere flat because if you put it like like this, it will slide down because it doesn't dry very quickly. Mm -hmm. And just put it somewhere for a day, and it'll it'll dry and it'll 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 hold for probably forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we have a uh, for next time maybe more listing. CEO tips for Etsy. Okay, yeah, we can we can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And tips how to increase the sales. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe, well, maybe maybe we can do how to start an Etsy store. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I think that's it for today. Um, we'll say goodbye for now, and we'll see you next next time next Wednesday on Anita's channel at eleven o'clock. Okay. Okay, Anita, you want to say goodbye? Thank you, everyone, for joining us, taking the time uh, out of your days to be here with us. We really appreciate you all. Uh, yes, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for coming in. Yes, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.